Hi, it's Heart, and welcome back to my channel. We are going to do the most, well, highly requested um, episode, and that is adulting with Miss Cheese Escudero <laughs> over here. But before we begin, I just want to say thank you to everybody who sent their questions on Instagram. We received a lot. Actually, we were overwhelmed, but we came up, I mean, well, we chose a really, really good set of questions. So, are you ready, Cheese? May nagtanong ba nung iniintay kong tanongin na question? Ano bang iniintay mong tanongin na question? Anong nakita mo kay Hart? Anong nagustuhan mo kay Hart? Mamaya pwede natin pag-usapan yun. Pero ngayon, pag-usapan muna natin yung, <laughs> yung sobrang hindi na talaga tayo nakikita, by the way. put you on the spot. How's life been? Because this time I haven't seen you for over a month. Pag-usapan natin yung pinagawa natin o yung Pwede ice rin, But, <laughs> you know, I mean, I just wanted to also bring it up because a lot of people during these days are really dealing with LDR and, you know, what that's exactly what's happening with our lives now. But I love it that, you know, it's like, parang it's always brand new, but, you know, minsan, Nalulumbay, nalulungkot ba? Nalulungkot, nalulumbay. Yeah. Mas maswerte na nga tayo ngayon. Yung unang girlfriend ko, LDR yun, when I studied in the States. Walang email, walang cellphone, walang libreng app like Viber, WhatsApp, na pwede mong tawagan na makausap. Dalawang paraan lang para mag-communicate. Snail mail, or susulat ka talaga, literally. Papadala mo two weeks bago matanggap. So, kung susulat ka araw-araw, yeah. dapat araw-araw ba matanggap siya. Or long distance call na sobrang mahal. Ngayon, actually, libre. Pwede mo makausap yung mahal mo o kaibigan mo. Email, libre din, pwede. Noon, hindi ganun yun. So, mas maraming oportunidad naman na to be in touch. Meron pang video call. Um, o, oh. noon, walang ganang. Yeah, I get that because that is in some mga ex ko. We had Skype, we <laughs> we had um, video calls. MMS also was very uso then. Tapos super Skype hanggang madaling araw. Ganon din tas iintayin mo na makatulog yung isa. Ganon din. Oh, tapos um, good night kay nang good night. mga dalawang pum basis na wala pa gusto magbaba ng telepono. Ganon kayo. Pero telepono ganon. Ah, tele Kami kasi we would look into each other's eyes like that. Hmm. Parang hindi ka naman masaya din na nag-okay okay lang. Sobrang saya. <laughs> <laughs> Super. So wait, what is your advice to people na um, are separated during this time of the pandemic? Um, this too shall come to pass. It will pass um, sooner than later. It's a matter of holding on to each other during this time. Mm -hmm. Hindi naman siguro dahilan porkit nag-COVID, mag-break kayo dahil hindi kayo nagkita ng let's say isa, dalawa, tatlong buwan, isang taon. Ibig sabihin nun, mababaw. So mature, at hindi, right? At hindi nakaugat yung kung ano mang meron kayo. Your understanding of each other's profession, right? Am I right? Um, oh, parang familiar to. Yeah, I mean, I totally get it. No, I totally get it. No, I totally get it naman. Because I know that, you know, as a governor, it's like you're a little president of your little country. And it's intense, guys. I mean, I thought that being a governor would be less than being a senator, but... It's a different story, but I do appreciate everything you do. Ipasa ko rin sa'yo, ikaw kaya nag-shooting ka na isang buwan sa China. O, oh, ganun din man yun. Um, unawaan, intindihan. Ibabalik mo lang dun sa isa pag inaaway ka dahil doon. Wala pa. nang balikan! <laughs> Just ko, Dai. Okay, fine. So anyway, but as it, in, in short, in a nutshell, it's about communication and understanding. It's about communication and actually appreciating each other while you're yeah. apart and yeah. making the most out of that too and not simply thinking that it's a waste of time while yeah. you're apart. Para pag nakita kayo, may gigil. What? O, di ba, may gigil. <laughs> Like me, I mean, ako, I feel like I'm, I'm also able to do the things that I need to do when you're busy. I'm also productive. So you both grow. The selfish kind of love. You don't need that selfish kind Yes. Of love. Um, each and every person would also need time apart. Of time course. to be by himself or herself. I agree. For them to grow. Not apart, but separately. I agree, I agree. Very good, Kajan. Okay, so a lot of people <laughs> on Instagram, you know, want to ask with your busy, well, with our busy schedule. No, ako kasi my, I show you guys on Darling IG stories. Ka. Yeah, I know, yeah. I'm busy, but they know what I do. But with you, like, do you even have time to do Netflix? Not in the province. Not here in, in Manila, yes. Actually, here in Manila, Cheese only did Netflix once, and that was last night. We watched um, tagal, tagal Queen's na. Gambit. But yes. 
Ang pinapanood ni Cheese, honestly, is ano, Pinoy blockbuster. <laughs> Which, so, ano, one. Yeah, yun yung mga bet niya. Yung mga, ano, minsan, isang minsan pala ka lang. Minsan-minsan napapanood kaya kita doon. Parang wala naman yata akong bukas. Meron na. Hindi wala akong bukas. Manaka, manaka. Meron. Bata pa ako noon. Oo oh, nga. Okay, so that's what they were just wondering. And like, what are, what are the things that you like to do when you want to chill? Go to the shooting range. Um, what else? Watch you on Instagram or other people on Facebook. Um, and live vicariously. Isa lang kasi yung TV na nasa baba ng bahay sa Sorsogon. So, I get to watch it very... Hindi ba doon? Parang walang TV so, doon. Ah, sa yes. kwarto ko, walang TV. Kaya I, I get to watch TV, TV far and apart. Oh. So, when I'm in Manila, I get to watch TV a lot. Okay, as somebody who is in the public eye and you're a politician, is there anything that you've done in the past that was quite embarrassing? Madami. May kinamayan kang hindi pala nakatingin sa'yo, hindi ka kinamayan. Kung may kinawayan kang hindi naman nakatingin, nakala mo kinakawayan ka, pero wala pumapansin sa'yo. Uh, may mga kasama ako sa kampanya, nakaway ng kaway. Pag may motorcade, pag tinignan mo yung kinakawayan, building lang pala. <laughs> Nangyayari din sa akin, um, nangyayari din sa akin yun. Or when you speak, you're not getting the desired reaction that you were expecting. Um, marami, pero mostly na nagsisimula pala. These are really just like random questions from all over the place, but I'm sure it'll all make sense when the video is done. But like for example, kunwari, you're faced with somebody that you don't remember you met, but they seem like they really know you. What would you do? Ay ilang beses na nangyari sa akin yun. Um, you change the conversation um, and hope to God that He doesn't ask you, Don't you remember me? Ano name ko? Anong name ko? Kasi may gumaganan eh. Uh -huh. um, siguro nangyari sa akin dalawa, tatlong beses pa lang sa buhay ko. You gotta change the topic and you pull a friend or call a friend and um, introduce the friend. By the way, this is Hart. Oh, hi, I'm Hart. And then, exactly. but of course, of course, your friend needs to know. Well, I know when he doesn't. So, tag team na kami doon. Hi, I'm Hart. Nice to meet you. And then they'll introduce yes. themselves. Okay, another question um, that uh, we were getting on Instagram. There are bosses na talagang medyo makulit pagdating sa pag work, workplace naman itong pinag-uusap. Mas ikaw yan kesa ako. Pinapakailaman yung personal life mo. Um, or what? Parang lahat na lahat. Ano, ano, what is your reaction or how do you deal with your boss na medyo interfering with your personal life? That's the nice thing about being elected. Your bosses are your constituents or those who voted for you. Not really an official who's higher than you. So, although mas mataas ang presidente, sa senador, sa congressman, sa governor, hindi mo naman talaga sa boss eh. Ang boss mo, yung tao na bumoto sa'yo. Yung mga boss na yon don't usually interfere with your personal life. It's totally up to you whether you will let it affect your personal life. Because if you don't do your job, probably next elections, you won't win anymore. So it's totally up to you and the ball is in your hands. Unlike you that you actually have a boss. You have a boss at GMA, you have a quote-unquote boss whenever you endorse a product. Um, they get to be more demanding than my bosses. Yeah, and I'm kind of used to being bossed around. Talaga, parang hindi ko naman naramdaman yun. Well, because dumating na ako sa point na ayoko na. <laughs> but all my life, parang I would be yes, yes ma'am, yes mom. Parang hindi kita naramdaman sa'yo. So, sanay na ako na ganun. Sanay ka pag, na pala eh. Sanay ako, tapos pag nagre-reklamo ako sa schedule ko, dahil wala akong tulong, hindi pa ako, hindi ako makauwi, dahil hindi na ako makaligo, dahil yung call time ko is already now, tapos nandito pa ako sa last location ko na nag-start nung 3 a.m. the other day. Pagdating ko sa bahay na isang mabilisan, pag hinagaaway kami, may nakalista na lang ng schedule from Monday to ano na, wala na akong excuse and she won't answer her call. But I'm so used to that and now, you know, I've adjusted. But I'll never, ever allow <laughs> that to happen again to me. Okay. Um, so, okay, nagbabayad naman yan. No, it's really just more of, I'm enjoying life now. And I think I believe I'm kind to you. I think I am. Uh, yeah, so, okay. Let's go a little bit more deeper, like politics and everything that's happening on social mm -hmm. media. I mean, we spoke about this the last time mm -hmm. and a lot of people actually resonated with what we talked about. Um, let's talk about people that are like private citizens that not necessarily want to be in the spotlight, but want to make a difference uh, for the country. 
Um, I know a few people that, like a, a few of our friends that have been helping a lot, but what else can they do to help? Bago ang social media, bago ang internet, bago yung Twitter, Facebook, and everything you have now. The only way to make your voice heard would be to go out in the streets, hold a placard, shout at the top of your voice, whatever it is that you believe in. Or get to get interviewed by a, a media personality so that your voice can be heard. Now, um, everyone's voices can actually be posted and in a way heard depending on what they're saying. So there's more op openings and possibilities and opportunities for involvement for any ordinary citizen or even for high-ranking officials in government. Politics defined is simply the art of influencing others. So if you try to influence someone, whether to subscribe to what you believe in, whether it pertains to government or how they should dress or how they should talk, what they should eat, then you are engaging in politics. That's within the realm of the definition of politics. So in a way, all of us are engaged in politics. Some in relation to government, some in relation to convincing your friend to go with you to where you want to go. Yeah. Even if she doesn't want to initially. Let's talk about like with the last, with what happened, the typhoons that came. A lot of people started to donate, a lot of, you know, I heard you say like you had certain concerns about donations and stuff. Just, I mean, privately we had this conversation. I mean, I can edit it out if you don't want to talk about <laughs> it. But I mean, I think that you made so much sense and I, I don't mind sharing what you said. What is important about donating goods? What's important when you donate is to actually look at the people who are in need of donations. Most people, some people, simply to make them feel good, um, put five kilos of rice, X um, pieces of canned goods, um, instant mami, cafe. They pack it, they give it away to a person whose house was um, flooded or whose house was inundated totally by a flood or nasunugan. But at the end of the day, if you think about it from his or her perspective, meaning the victim's family, um, they're currently in an evacuation center. Paano nila lulutuin yung um, limang kilong bigas? Paano nila iinitin yung kukuha ng mainit tubig para sa kape, para sa noodle? Um, what they need immediately, right after a typhoon, would be a soup kitchen, a hot meal, that's readily available right then and there. Otherwise, uh, mostly what you see on TV is they distribute the relief packs, yeah. Papa picture, or yeah, As but soon yeah. as the person returns to the evacuation center, he or she will just stare at it. That would come in, relief packs would come in probably a week or two weeks after. Once they've started, once the floodwaters have come down, and once they've started actually rebuilding their homes and their lives, that's where it would come in. Yeah, but like for example, I mean, I also donated rice and all of that. My heart was there, so what did I do wrong? What, what rice, should I do? What what should I do? In your case, the rice that you donated, for example, in Sersogon, we used via we used as a soup kitchen. We bought the province bought something like a hundred isandang caldero at time binili namin isandang lutuan para makadistribute kami sa mga stranded na nagbabiyahe papuntang Visayas, Mindanao. Para makadistribute kami ng actually hot meals sa mga evacuation um, centers. But if it's already packed, meaning nakapack na yung relief pack, what we do is we give it out by way of food for work. If someone donates cash, we give it by way of cash for work. Kapalit nun, maglinis sa barangay, tumulong sa kapitbahay para makapag kumpuni ng bahay, hindi niya sariling bahay, mm -mm. para you get to double the effort and at the same time, you don't promote a culture of mendicancy. Yeah. Um, you give them dignity, you give them pride in their own work and in rebuilding their own lives. Yeah, because you know, you see people begging and all of that. Kawawa naman. I mean. Kawawa din, pero kawawa din naman, mas matagal sila magiging kawawa kung hinayaan mo rin ganun. So, ever since um, what we did was when we were hit by Typhoon Pisoy, we cook for them and when we, when we give relief packs, it's in exchange yeah. for something coming out from them by way of cleaning their own barangay, by way yeah. of cleaning or helping rebuild the house of an old woman in their barangay, this um, lolo in their barangay, or this orphan in their barangay. Pag ganun, at least na multiply mo yung value ng relief pack kesa kanya-kanya iyo hoard mag-iipon ng relief pack tapos minsan ibebenta lang dahil sobra-sobra na. Yeah, because there's this term floating around that's it's donation fatigue. 
What, do you, what can you say about that? That term was used in politics more often than in relation to calamities. Pag takbo ng takbo yung isang politiko, meron ng donor fatigue yung mga tumutulong sa kanya. Manalo man siya o matalo. Ganon din siguro sa kalamidad. Donor fatigue comes in if um, we've been facing a lot of problems ever since COVID started. Now the typhoon season is set in. Um, ganon pa rin. Minsan, hindi naman sa donor fatigue pero wala na rin mabibigay yung dating may pwedeng ibigay pa. Mm. Kung maga pigampiga na. But then again, if you still have, there's no reason not to give, not yeah. to extend it further. Isang natutunan ko sa buhay, pag maluwang ka sa pera, mas malaki at mas marami yung balik. Um, simple law of karma. Pag mahigpit ka sa pera, madamot ka, um, minsan makikita mo sa buhay mo, if you look back, noong mga panahong ganun ka, mas madalang dumating yung grasya at yung beneficyo rin. So I encourage everyone to actually be open to giving. I assure you, um, it will, you will reap the benefits of that when the time comes. It may not be immediate. Sometimes it'll take a while. But if you look back on your life, you will see and realize that during the times that you actually were helping other people or a lot of people, um, it was easy. Money was easier to come by. Okay, so wait, going back just to make it clear, donating um, canned goods, all of these things is still very, very good. What you're saying is that whoever is in charge yes. of that split, that place should have a system that they should be able to cook for the people. Yes. Kasi paano nga naman nila bubuksan yung mga dilata at lulutuin ang mga bigas? Eh wala nga silang mainit na tubig. Ngayon, kung hindi ginagawa yun ng mga nasa baba, ng mga official sa baba, then There's whoever wants wrong. whoever wants to really help, then they can do, do it, it themselves. Do it yourself, which is also Which is also important. being done by yeah. a lot of groups actually yeah. now. Yeah, compared right. to before. So, about friends and foes, going to a different topic naman tayo ngayon. Lighting, medyo lighter side naman. Um, friends and foes? Yes. In politics uh, or no? In politics <laughs> and in personal life. Like, I experience a lot. Um, what do you think about the idea of outgrowing your friends? Like, you, for example, you've had a lot of friends in the past that aren't there anymore. I mean, I've seen people come and go. Of course, my life, I've seen people come. What, do you th what are your thoughts? Ka, what are your thoughts about that? <laughs> the best test that you haven't outgrown a friend, notwithstanding the fact that you haven't seen each other for a long time, is if when you see each other, parang walang panahon na lumipas. Mm -hmm. No awkwardness, walang um, dumadang anghel na sobrang tahimik. Mm -hmm. Parang wala lang, parang kahapon lang din kayo uli nag-usap. Like lot, not a day gone by. I have a lot of friends who are like that. We don't get to see each other weekly, monthly. Sometimes you see each other once every year. But when we do, parang kahapon lang kaming huling nakita. Yeah, I agree. Yun yung mga kaibigan na pwede mong sabihin talagang pang matagalan. Yun yung mga kaibigan na kahit wala kayong parehong karanasan, may mapag-uusapan pa rin kayo. Um, I still have those friends. Yeah, friends, friends from high school, from grade school. Yes, and those friends, those are the friends that I cherish more than those that happen to be my friends because we're doing something together now. That um, it's convenient for us or we need each other right now. Um, well, they're also friends, but not... Um, Para hindi mo sila maasahan during... Baka maasahan mo naman, hindi mo palang alam, kulang palang yung panahon. Pero ito mga kaibigan ko mula ng high school, ng elementary, Yun talaga. Tried and um, tested. Um, tried and tested. Come hell or high water. You know, they'd be there. Whether they're in a position to actually help you with what you need, you can rest be assured that they will always, at the very least, be there for you. Okay, ako din naman, what I call them is taping friends. Parang you're only friends during taping. But like, that was before. But some develop into real friendships, some yes, did not. Yes, some develop into real friendships. But I must admit that I, it does make me sad whenever I think about friendships that all of a sudden aren't there anymore. You don't know what you did wrong. You feel like you know stinka. I don't understand that. Honestly, me. I'm Because I don't have a lot of friends. So when I have a friend, I really invest my emotions and my time. Every, you know me. I don't understand why all of a sudden, parang... They're different, yeah, I don't know. Well, sooner or later, you'll be more secure with respect to who you are, have more confidence that um, for as long as you didn't do anything wrong or bad, um, there's no reason for you to feel bad whether you think or hindi na nagpakita. At the end of the day, um, well, what, what, what was it? Honestly, ako, what was it? Like, because sometimes I feel really dumb. Like, I, I, have, a, I have a friend that, I, I don't know what happened, she just disappeared and I remember we'd go, I'd see her in parties and I'd feel really stupid that I'd really always just run after, hey, hey. And then, oh my God, 
sure, and then I gotta go. And parang you feel like until I didn't say anything until my friend started to say, ano mo, masyado kang hinahabo, parang Kahit hinatama. naman patuloy kang maghabol sa ganong klaseng tao, kaibigan, ano mo masama dun? You're still being friendly. Parang they will come around. You, Or if they don't, you're still not doing anything wrong. So what did you lose? Or maybe they're just trying to do something with their lives and they're, they're just in a different... O baka iba yung kalagayan nila. But at the end of the day, again, you were not doing anything wrong. You're not doing anything wrong whenever you approach them, whenever you feel like you're close and she does not. Wala ka pa rin namang ginagawang mali eh. Just, just put it at the back of your mind eh. Hindi mo siya maaasahan kung sakasakali. It's just sad. Otherwise, you'll fall flat on your face. <laughs> I have done, well, that have, has happened to me many, many times. What can you say about people romanticizing about the resilience of Filipinos? Because that's been talked about a lot and I just wanted to ask. 14 to 16 typhoons a year in the eastern seaboard of our country, it cannot be denied the Filipinos are indeed resilient. Whether you romanticize it or use another term to describe it, it's still not an excuse for government to abdicate on its responsibility of doing its job or doing what it needs to do. And government precisely was invented for that. Governments were invented in order to fill a gap, in order to help people that cannot be helped by ordinary people. Governments were invented to serve, to protect, and to safeguard. Because um, if you live in Manila, you can't do that in Cagayan. Um, if you live in Cagayan, you can't do that for Sursagon. Um, yun naman talaga ang objective at reason at purpose kaya ginawa ang gobyerno eh. Mm. So, natawagin resilient na Pilipino, okay lang. Puro yun sa pagsambayan ng Pilipinas pero hindi dahilan yun para hindi nila gawin yung trabaho nila o para magkulang sila sa dapat nilang ginagawa. That government was faulted for using, for calling the Filipino people resilient. That often by itself, to me, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as, as I said, they still did their part and not simply rely on the so-called resiliency of um, the people. Nakakayanin nila automatically. Nakakayanin nila automatically. Nakakalungkot lang. Yung problema natin taon-taon tungkol sa bagyo, ganun pa rin taon-taon at wala pa rin ginagawa tungkol doon. Okay, na question. What would you do if you had any kind of like power to, to correct? Because now we have relief goods, now there's rescue operations, but it still doesn't solve the, the problem. Put the monetary value to the damage each and every typhoon wreaks on the communities, our communities. For example, kung kada baha o kada ulan wala pang bagyo, pinapasa na lahat ng opisina, lahat ng negosyo, lahat ng trabaho, lahat ng skwela, magkano bang nawawala sa atin doon? I read a study that said um, we lose about 200 billion pesos a year because of the missed economic opportunities brought about by declaring no classes or no, no work whenever there's flooding. Then if it costs that much, um, hindi naman siguro masama maglagay ng isang daang billion kahit utangin natin para makorek yan. Kalahati lang yun ng gastos doon sa nawawala sa atin kada taon o kahit sabi mo pa, dalawang daang billion, one time, big time. Um, para sa akin, yun ang mas dapat gawin kesa meron kang 10, 11 billion na flood control every year na useless lang naman, na bali wala lang at alam mo next year, ganun pa rin ang mangyayari. Somebody, for example, proposed, it's a complicated okay. um, proposal, construct a huge cistern, at least temporarily. What's a cistern? Malaking lalagyan na ng tubig. Mm. They proposed it during the previous administration's time. Um, I don't know the details, but it sounded good. Mm -hmm. For example, Hukayin daw yung buong football field ng UST, gumawa ng malaking cistern doon. Tapos ibalik uli yung lupa, ibalik uli yung babaw para football field pa rin siya. Tapos yung drain doon pabagsakin lahat para wala ka ng baha sa Espanya at saka sa University Avenue at sa Quiapo. Tapos pag wala ng ulan, then you get to pump it out. If you can filter it, then you provided water pa, potable doon sa area na yun. This is, this is doable. I mean, scientifically, it's of okay it to is. do. Of course it is. Why? Most houses have a sister. We have a sister. We have a sister. But why aren't they doing it? Probably because um, it'll take them about four to five years to do it. And by that time, their term would end. And um, it's the next administration Isn't there, that they'll reap the benefits of it. But you told me that there's, yeah, but you said that there's a law that pwedeng ituloy kahit hindi ka na nakaupo. Oo naman. Pwede naman talaga. But, Pero pwede rin naman baguhin kung ayaw. At mahabang awa yon para ibalik. In some countries, especially in Asia, they plan for 100 years. They plan for 200 years. When they build an airport, they they plan for the next 100 years. So, ganito yung population ngayon, ganito kalaking airport. There must be room for expansion, so we have to build the airport in a lot that still has more space available should the time come that we need it. 
We plan things in the Philippines for six years. The medium-term development plan of the Philippines for our country is six years. Why? Because that's the term of a sitting president. Yeah. Um, it should be longer, actually, and whoever sits so as president there should, should be a continuation. Should continue it, and the project should also have sustainability because big projects won't be finished in six years. Unfortunately, people get to judge a sitting president based on his performance while he was sitting, while he is sitting. So these things have to be balanced, and it takes a level of maturity not only on the part of the politicians or officials, but more importantly on the part of the voters to understand that that a sitting official is not doing anything simply because you don't see the fruits of his labor. Yeah. Some because of those that would matter the most would yeah. take time. Yeah, so... Oh my God, it's so stressful though. <laughs> it really is. Because, you know, now, because of everything that's happening, of course, even for me, like, when I think about politics, of course not you, but when I think about <laughs> politics, it, you know, it's very negative to me, and I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. How can that be changed? It's a work in progress. Babe. Um, it cannot be done overnight. It's a work in progress. If you look at our history, we're a relatively young democracy. Young given the fact that um, we were given our independence, if some would argue against it, that we're not truly independent or were not truly independent at that time. In 1946, so if you compute that, that's 54 years plus 20, we're 74. We're, we're a 74 year old democracy. Calculator, comparing it to. <laughs> Comparing it to other countries who have been a democracy for two, three hundred years. And they went through the same problems we're going through. Lack of vision, short-sightedness, corruption. Um, they went through all of that too. Who wouldn't want for us to leapfrog to where those older democracies are now? But sometimes you still have to go through the process in order to learn the lesson. Parang nag gusto mo matuto magbike, kung pwede lang yung anak mo marunong na magbike agad, di na mahuhulog eh, di na magkakasugat eh. Pero kailangan niyang pagdaanan yun. So ganun din yung gobyerno, ganun din yung tao, ganun din yung demokrasya. Until they realize and the voters become educated enough to know who they should elect, am I right? Because then now, okay, um, I'm totally ignoring all the other questions because this is so juicy. That's a difficult, that's a difficult yeah, statement tell to me. me. Tell, can you tell me? Because now it's all about popularity. It's all no. about... Who are you to say simply because you're more educated? Simply because a person has um, more experiences? Who are they to say that they, their choices are better than the ordinary person's choice? Wala naman sa galing, wala naman sa talino yun. Wala sa yaman yun. Minsan, pag matalino yung nakaupo, mas mahirap mahuli pag gumagawa siya ng kalokohan dahil nga matalino. Matalino nga, ginagamit naman yung talino sa masama, hindi sa mabuti. Kulang nga yung pinag-aralan, hindi naman ganun katalino. Pero nasa tamang lugar naman yung puso. At kumuha siya ng mga matatalinong tao para tulungan siya at pinapakinggan niya. Hindi rin kawalan yun. Baka nga mas magaling pa siyang leader kesa rin sa matalino. Na ang isip niya, ako na pinakamagaling, wala na mas magaling sa akin. Kung anong sabihin ko, yun ang sundin yung lahat. Mahirap din naman yun. So, wala sa talino, wala sa level ng edukasyon ng taong bumoboto o ng taong binoboto kung sino yung talagang bagay at angkop para sa atin. Okay, I know you're gonna hate this question. <laughs> lot, I, I got a lot of... Uh, but I already know your answer, but let's just <laughs> put it out there because I hate it when people always... Of course, I, I get it though, that people will always put color, but are you running now for president? No, I have no plans of doing so. Why? No money, no resources, not my time, um, and I'm happy where I am. You have to want it, actually. So those who are running who say that they don't want it, um, it's not that accurate. You have to want it um, before you can actually decide to run, actually run a campaign, and be the president, governor, congressman, or senator. It's gonna change um, It is, it will. Um, so you have to want it first. Right now, I'm happy where I am. If I do run, I have three choices in 2022. Either run for governor again, not run, or run for the Senate if I have the numbers, or simply... Nakagano na lang ako sa'yo. Huwag naman ganun. <laughs> ayoko naman ganun, naka ano. Ay mo naka yung pang limang aso, no. anim na aso. No, na. ayoko nang ganun. <laughs> <laughs> Kailangan busy ka kasi mapapressure ako. But, um, but why did you run for vice president before? We never really spoke about this. Although, can I just say before anything to just, you know, I really did enjoy the campaign. I love campaign season because it's it's a different world. It's a different high. 
Um, and I enjoyed going to different places and meeting different people. But, you know, I mean, why did you run for I vice I guess for president? two reasons. Because I thought I had something to offer and wanted to offer myself. And number two, I wanted to get it over and done with. What do you mean you wanted to get it over and done with? Para tapos na. Hindi ako natalo ka. Tigilan na yung mga tabakuan. Parang wala nang what if. Wala nang what if. Tapos na. Wala nang what if. Diba? Um, and at the same time, at that time, um, I felt like I had something unique or different. I know what your intentions were, but like, what did you want to do at that time? As vice president, for example. Parang, parang masakit naman tong inaan mo na. <laughs> <laughs> Bakit? Masaktad ka ba? No, 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 no. Actually, you weren't. You were fine. Each election I ran for, I've run in seven elections. One in all six except for one. Um, sa lahat ng election ko, hindi ko naman pinagdasal na manalo ko eh. Marami akong hinihingi sa Diyos. Marami ako ibang bagay na pinagdarasal sa Diyos. Pero hindi isa yon sa hit pinagdarasal ko sa Diyos mula nung simula na manalo ko sa election. Mm -hmm. I always pray in relation to elections that I'm running for, for thy, for his will to be done. For thy will to be done. Mahirap naman hilingin ng isang bagay na mas makakasama pala sa'yo, sa pamilya mo, o sa bansa, o sa lahat ng tao. Mas maganda na yung ginawa mo lang yung kaya at pwede mong gawin. Tapos, um, bahala na, mangyari yung mangyari. It's easier to um, accept if it was not given to you because you didn't ask for it. Yeah. It's also easier to embrace and be more confident because you would know that if it happened in accordance with your prayer, it was in accordance with this will as well. The reason why I ask this because every time we do an adulting, we touch a lot of people's lives. We inspire a lot of people that watch us. And I just wanted to put it out there because, you know, with the politics and I myself understand that everything has color, politics is politics. I didn't want our adulting to have color. I wanted it to be an episode where people can learn and know that there are no ulterior motives. That's why I wanted to bring it up because I know I know naman that you're not gonna run. So nagpapaka defensive tayo nga. Ako, no, because it's, it's nice to watch. I mean, I honestly learn from it as well, and I just wanted to share that. Okay, so um, no ulterior motives given the fact that um, if at all, running for office is a totally different field, totally different time, totally different. Um, experience as you said that has nothing to do with nag-agree na ho kami kasi di ba sa first adulting pa lang na hindi siya papasok sa politika at ako hindi papasok sa showbiz siya may pag-asa sa politika ako walang pag-asa sa showbiz no i wouldn't it's not my it's not my thing i'll do what i need to do on the side i'm fine precisely so at the end of the day um you can never make everybody happy yeah. they will always put motives color or whatever for as long as um a majority, even sometimes a minority, think differently and it's serving a purpose for them. Um, say la vie. It's okay. At least we both understand each other. We know our intentions. <laughs> okay, so now, my second to the last question. The next election's coming up. What is your advice to people that are about to vote or first-time voters or people who is going to vote again? Like, what's a good advice to give them? Get to know the candidates. That's one advantage, again, social media gives you. Um, you get to see them. Not just watch their ad. You get to see them. You get to see videos about them. Now, it's been said that the politicians of today are worse than the politicians of yesterday. Um, I'm not so sure about that. If at all the politicians today get to be exposed more given that a lot of people have cameras already. Um, so, pag nagmura, nagyabang, nagwangwang, ang daling makita ngayon. Kumpara dati, na ang may camera lang, media man, mm -hmm. ang may camera man, photographer, ngayon halos lahat meron eh. So, hindi naman sa mas masama yung mga nasa gobyerno ngayon, mas exposed lang sila ngayon. Mas nakikita ko ano man yung ginagawa nila. Hindi ibig sabihin, hindi ginagawa ng mga iba noon yun mas hindi lang nakikita noon kumpara ngayon. And it's a nice check and balance. Because like an actress, if you're acting, you act only in front of a camera. Politicians, um, given the millions of cameras around them that can be switched on at any given moment, then um, it takes its toll on them in so far as not being able to um, be consistent in who they really are. Yeah. Ultimately, parang yun sa PBB, Lalabas at lalabas yung ugali mo if you're on camera 24-7 and you can't hide it. Yeah. That's the principle behind it. So it's a good check and balance too for our politicians. To be under a microscope, so to speak. In this case, millions of cameras and microscopes in order yeah. to keep them in check. In order to prevent abuse. 
in order to correct abuses mm -hmm. as well. So for me, it's a positive thing. And research about your candidate. Ako na pintas na bumoto na ka short pantsi. Pero mas maganda ng pintas naman yon kaysa na unang kasapila ng bumaboto ka. With this whole pandemic happening and everybody's lives are on a pause, people are being anxious. People are, you know, a lot of people losing their jobs. You know, the dream seems to be so hard to reach. What is your advice to give people hope and to keep dreaming? Parang LDR lang yan. Um, at some point in time, you will see each other. This COVID pandemic, these lockdowns will come to pass. This will be over sooner or some would say later. And just wait for the grand opening of the Philippines, of the world, of your lives um, once that happens. That's something to look forward to. But kung sinabi yung parang LDR, yung sinabi ko nga, pag hindi kayo nagigita ng matagal, eh, may gigil, may iba kang tingin sa mahal mo, sa kaibigan mo, sa pamilya mo. Mas appreciative ka. Diba? So, ganun din naman siguro yung mundo. Ganun din yung pakiramdam. Ganun din yung buhay pagkatapos. You gotta smell the flowers more. You gotta appreciate what you have more. Once it's given you again, given the fact that it's been deprived, you've been deprived of it for so many months, for so for a year, let's put it. It's something to look forward to. Kesa naman yung isipin mo na habang buhay ng ganito, um, hindi naman to habang buhay. Lilipas at lilipas, matatapos at matatapos din to. Kung gano'ng katagal, hindi natin alam. Pero mas matagal, mas mamahalin mo kung anong meron ka. Mas mamahalin mo kung ano yung nagagawa mong dati. At um, mas magiging masaya ang buhay sa totoo lang. Because you get to enjoy the simpler things in life. And for the meantime, what should they do? For the meantime, make the most out of what they have. I saw an ad. It's a beautiful ad. Um, kailan daw babalik yun dati? Kailan daw babalik yun dati? Kailan daw babalik sa eskwela? Kailan daw mapapasok sa trabaho yung nanay yung tatay? Tapos sa dulo, sabi nung ad, sana wag na mangyari yun kasi masaya ako. Andito yung nanay at tatay ko palagi nagtatrabaho sa bahay, working from home. Sana ganito palagi. Andito yung kapatid ko pagkatapos ng klase, nakakalaro ko. Sana ganito palagi kasi yung lola at lola ko andito sa bahay din, hindi lumalabas at hindi nagpupunta kung saan-saan. So you gotta appreciate and look at it as a glass half filled instead of a glass half empty. Appreciate, love, live what you have right now. Don't think it's a waste of time. And use that opportunity to grow so that when the world reopens, then you're a better person. You're then you're a able to spend... better version of yourself. You're a better version of yourself. You're able to spend quality time with the people you love because probably when the world reopens, you'll be busy with other things. So at least you, you were able to do that during this time. Mr. Escudero, it's nice meeting you. <laughs> Thank you so much for getting me this interview. You're always so wonderful. <laughs> um, that was really good. Thank you so much again for being, you know, for enlightening all of us. Um, <laughs> okay, well, guys, that's it. Um, it was a pretty long adulting, but uh, you know, I hope you guys again were enlightened and inspired. Um, keep safe. Again, thank you, Cheese, for joining us on this episode. You're and welcome, darling. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if there's anything else, any other ideas that you want to, you know, share with me, what can I do for the future videos? Just comment down below. This has been Heart and Cheese. Bye. Magbay ka naman. Bye.